All right. Here we are. This could this should be a good show. This will be a real good show. I hope so. Yeah, I really so hope so. so. I'm here. Power and Speed Podcast. That's us. Call on number 908-751-0211. Thomas, we have a pretty good guest that you lined yeah, up. Yeah, we have a real good guest. Uh, we're going to have uh, Joe Kravikis from Precision Turbo. Um, Tad, what should they do, by the way? They should like us on Facebook. That's right. They should. <laughs> Crunch? How are you, Tom? Good, man. So, yeah, it should be good, right, Mike? I think it should be really good. Um, I've got a, a few questions. And, you know, the, the problem is I'm such a, I want to say a novice at turbo <laughs> stuff. Yeah. I just, I, I mean, you know, I get it. You know, hair dryer on the motor, connected to the exhaust and the intake. And, yep. <laughs> but Does something, makes power. Yeah, makes power. Whistles. Yep. Makes, no, my, my diesel truck has one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I they mean. They sound cool. Yeah, they do sound cool. They're taking over. They are taking over. They're and, taking over. you know, the, the modern electronics you know, brought this all out. Absolutely. You know, I mean, modern electronics is what even made any of this possible. I mean, I think the first thing that we could all remember that came out that really kind of looked like a game changer was the Grand National. Yep. You know, that came out and then people were like, wow, this yeah. can be done. That's a V6. Yeah. That's a V6. Yep. Think of, yeah, it's uh but, but it should be good. And, uh, if you got questions, call in 908-751-0211. Uh, we'll give the number out a couple of times. We actually have a call screener tonight. We do. So, we do. So that way we can uh, try to keep things moving along. We've only got him for a small period of time, right? He's yeah, got, about 30 minutes. He he uh, He's a busy guy, as you could imagine. Yeah, because for a minute it was looking like he wasn't going to make it. Like we had to have, a, you know, maybe a, a, a schedule rewrite. Yeah, yeah, no, no, he, he, uh, he had something going on. He still does, but... He was kind enough to uh, get us a half an hour, so we'll be good. We'll be fine. Yeah, I think so. I, I think I think this will be real good. Cool, cool. Now, what I do know is that you're leaving tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow morning. Where are you headed? Uh, I'm going to Florida. Um, west coast of Florida. I got customers for a couple days, and then I have some pretty exciting stuff. We're doing some um, 2JZ testing uh, at a dyno kind of a legendary dyno guy uh matt scranton he was one of the, the two jz uh innovators back in the day and we're going to do some engine dyno testing because testing in a car on a chassis dyno it's just it's hard you know you gotta if you want to change something you gotta pull the motor out and we may um we're testing pistons okay. so we have a couple sets and we're going to see what happens we're going to actually do some uh engine building on the dyno if need be so, turbocharged stuff yeah or? yeah big turbo okay precision turbo <laughs> luckily Plug, plug. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, we're actually not going for max power. We're going for boost. We're, we're trying to see how well we seal at, at, you know, crazy boost levels. Okay. Obviously a big part of this. And, I, you know, I kind of felt like a dick the other day when um, the one time of many <laughs> um, when we were <laughs> when we were talking to JJ with Subaru, I said, you know, uh, air to oil separator. <laughs> Cause I'm like, you know, that's for dry sump stuff. And yeah, I was right. like, are the art super is dry sump. Then I like kind of had the, the panic moment. Like, yeah, did like, I just say something like, stupid? Uh -oh, yeah. yeah. And I mean, I know what oil air to oil separators right, are, but right, I just, right. I couldn't. And then we talked about it afterwards, how, how much blow by can really yep. play a part in this. Yeah. And it never really realized it. Yeah. And I mean, the, the factory cars recirc into the inlet tract. So if you have enough blow by, you know, you can really inside some detonation throwing yeah. oil at everything yeah so uh yeah mm -hmm. not to not to get back on jj but his uh, aos is really really good but um yeah so we're going to test at some high boost levels and see if our new designs are are as good as we think they are and we think they are and then friday i'm going to uh florida 2k it's their third year of their uh, kind of texas 2k style race you know, a lot of GTRs, a lot of Supras. There'll be Mustangs. There'll be Corvettes. What's the What's the format of this one? Um, this is this isn't a roll. No, no, no. It's straight up drag racing. Okay. And uh, is this the half mile one that started the whole argument? No, 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 okay. no. This is quarter mile at Bradenton. Uh, there's going to be some. They're going to drive to Mexico and do some roll racing at night. Okay. It's a long ride to Mexico, obviously. Oh, yeah. But um, but the Mexican Racing League will be there, so uh, there'll be some of that. But for the most part, it's quarter mile stuff, and there'll be some fast cars there, some real fast stuff. Sounds interesting. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what? Uh, we'll pass the mic, but uh, I, I want to shout out to uh, one of my guys, Tony at T1. He went uh, he went really fast in his GTR this weekend. Yeah, I saw that. I mean, 207 and 1,500 feet. 
Oh, okay. 180 feet past the quarter mile. That's he went flying. 207. He went 207. Wow. That what kind of car was that? A GTR. Wow. With our pistons and rods in it. Wow. You don't happen to have the increase. He didn't tell you from the last, from the 1320 to the 1500, the incremental, do you? No, but. I'd believe, be interested to know you that. Want, but you want to hear something cool? Yeah. He told me his 100 to 150 time. Mm-hmm. 2.1 seconds. That's a, 100 to 150. Put that. 2. In, 1. So put, that's like going put, zero put to 60 all over again. I mean, yeah. think about that. At uh, two or three times as fast, too. Yeah. That's, wow. That's giddy up. So what do you got, Tad? Holy smokes. <laughs> <laughs> this is, we got to get cameras in here. I right? wish yeah, people could have seen us. What do you got, Tad? And Tad just looked at Tom like, so like, me? <laughs> That was oh, God. very. We, we have to. I mean, we 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 would be stars if we had cameras in here. Well, he would. <laughs> I would. We all would right. just laugh all. So, Todd, I guess that means you got nothing. I was waiting for the caller. We can ask. What? <laughs> Crunch. I know you got an event. Uh, well, you're doing something right after the show. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm supposed to be on Rock's show. This guy, uh, the Bounty Hunter from uh, South Carolina. Uh, they call him Rock. But uh, he hasn't called me back yet. He's supposed to hit the plane. He had to go somewhere. He's uh, uh, into music or whatever. So we don't know what's going on with that. But I'll definitely be in Fayetteville um, on the 16th and the 17th of October for Joe Gray and uh, Larry T's Custom T's, their uh, final season for now for the grudge racing and how they do it. So I'm always going to support Joe Gray. So everybody that knows about it, come on down. Uh, the 16th and the 17th, Friday and Saturday, they're having a annual their their giveaway of the fish fry Friday night, and then the rib contest on Saturday. And uh, guess who's the one of the judges for the rib contest? Up, uh, Jay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They they love my they love my judging. Last time it was. Did they love the food. judging, or do you just want the food? I think you I love the know. judging. I don't know. I think this is worth the trip for me. I was wanting to see some smoke, some tire smoke, smell some some VHT. And some but, some pork smoke, but the ribs, the ribs. Yeah, I gave pork up, but I had to, I had to uh, sidetrack it real quick for the judging. You remember that diet he was on, like you know, <laughs> yeah. two months ago? Yeah, that I was to prep that. for all this judging. Yeah, that was uh Yeah, I won that. Forgot won, about a lot, right? Six hundred dollars. I won that. I won it thirty pounds. Are you going for a days. repeat? You're gonna bring it up and then go back down again? <laughs> nah, nah, nah. The fluctuation of the weight messes your heart up, so I'm, I'm gonna stay here. <laughs> Two thirty five. Tad, you're safe because you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he's Ain't like, no kind of fluctuation going on there. That's funny. All right. <laughs> and the only thing that I had happen this weekend is uh, my basement flooded. Yeah, it did. I Are you a, serious? Yeah. I saw the picture. Yeah. Not not happy. Wow. Not you, happy. You weren't happy. No, nah, I had a well pump switch blow out. So all the shit that I wanted to do, like I wanted to clean one car to put it away for the winter, put a cover on it, you know, just put my Corvette socks on and go wash it. <laughs> and uh, I just, you know, just screwed my whole weekend up. Wow. And then was further irritated by, you know, I, I don't want to turn this into a hate fest on something, <laughs> but I, I got to bring it up. Uh-oh. In New Jersey, diesel fuel is like 215, 218, 213, somewhere around there. Wow. Yeah. It's pretty cheap. It is pretty cheap. And it's a bonus when you got a truck that holds 45 gallons of fuel. Right. That's kind of nice. Right. So, I mean, not it's not great, but it's a hell of a lot better than going there and filling up for 180 bucks. Yep. Gotcha. So, uh, I was driving somewhere and I... Pulled into a Hess gas station, just not thinking about it. I needed fuel and yeah. there's no prices outside. Now I know why. Almost three bucks when everybody else is like two fifteen. With, and I'm like, are no you no prices outside? No. So, and I'm like, are you now this is a Hess mm. gas station. I'm like, you scumbags. Did you black out? Um, I just looked at him, I said, Are you crazy? And you know, you need a guy that works there. You yeah, know, he, it's he, not him. No, but it just there could be an awful lot of hatred on this particular gas station. And I won't mention it. It's on, you know, 202 in the intersection of 22 in, in Somerville. <laughs> Just go in there and flip them off. Anybody that lives close. They <laughs> might say you. I'll do it on the way out. God. But now that's, uh, that's I, I had that's a really. highway robbery, man. It is bad. I had a really uneventful weekend other than the water. You know, it's funny you bring, bring that up. There's a there's a, an airport in Orlando. Yeah, an airport in Orlando. Good point. Mm -hmm. There's a gas station by the airport in Orlando. And uh, as you're going to return your rental car, it's the last one in line and they never have prices. Of course. And, and when gas is like two bucks a gallon, it's like four bucks a gallon. Uh-huh. Oh, And people man. pull in, they throw the thing in the tank before they even look and 
before you know it, you're paying four bucks a gallon for gas. I, I can't understand how this gas station could even be this price because there's a lot of other gas stations around. It, well, they, it's not like oh, they're yeah. the last in a line anywhere. Well, I mean, they, they could do whatever they want, right? If you don't catch it. The the worst thing is there are other people in there getting fuel. And I mean, I'm looking at regular that now is like a dollar eighty something mm-hmm. and it's like two twenty and people are just fill and I'm like, and look, I'm not cheap. And if I needed fuel, I needed fuel. Right. But I mean, what you know, that's just those just, people have a Hess card. Catching a rip off is not a good thing. No. That's just that's just being greedy. No, and I mean and you do see I understand what Tom's saying. Like if you're the last gas station before you get on the turnpike or something where there's no get they're gonna get you. Yep. Or if you're one of the only approved gas stations on like a turnpike or something, they're probably going to get you. Right. Your own fault for being stupid. But this is just <laughs> a regular gas station in the middle of <clears throat> regular stuff. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I, I, I just, I was really <laughs> upset at that guy and I had to, had to back myself down and just drive away because it's not his fault. He works there. You okay now? Yeah, I'm better. All right. I'm Good. better. But other than that, nothing for me. What do you got, Ted? <laughs> I've done the same thing at an Exxon in uh, Phillipsburg. So, <laughs> well, let, let's, that was over four bucks a gallon. But anyway, let's uh, let's <clears throat> do a little bit of discussion about before uh, before Joe calls in on the, the electronics that, that brought all this stuff forward. I think we can say at this point that, and, and this is something one of my own personal questions for the guy is going to be: What do they do to combat rule changes? that are geared kind of specifically at the component they make. Yeah. Like Anthony. And, and you know, I mean, we, we could talk about the guy. What's the guy's sort of video? And he's hating on the turbo guys. Stevie Jackson. It was, the guy's funny. <coughs> oh, you're talking about Stevie Jackson? Yeah. Oh, that's uh, KTR. Kill, okay. Killing Time Racing. Okay. That's the um, one with him and Phil Schuler. You know, we Ignore had Tom, he's dying. He's actually got a cold. <laughs> yeah, you know, we go at it all the time, Phil Schuler and KTR boys. Well, that that particular guy he put up a video that was pretty funny. Oh yeah, know? well he was talking about um he was calling the Turbo guys crybabies, right? Um, and you know, when like I I brought this up to Tom, and I I don't unfortunately this is like I told you when things get away right. and, and you don't you don't pay attention to stuff as much as you should, you right. start to lose the idea of classes and who belongs where and who runs why. Okay, that guy does he race against turbos? that are limited in size uh i'm not sure exactly well he's um i don't know how to put it i don't even know you know he has the pdra car he has the pro mod all right well if he's a pdra pro mod is Mm -hmm. that the same thing as anthony's or is anthony considered pro boost i'm not sure to be honest with you i have no idea we we would ask Tom, but he's currently dying. <laughs> I think he swallowed a tall chicken or something. <laughs> he just fell out the chair, went to the bathroom. So yeah, he'll be back in a second. So I mean, but but this guy, and I mean, this is, and and people have heard it. Like when I talk to Anthony, that uh, I I for me can't understand how they can. Uh, I mean, look, I understand they're trying to make the world a fair place, and I understand right. that you know cutting back the turbo sizes and everything else. But like when I listen to this guy, now Tom's back, and he did say that that guy is not in the same class as like Anthony. No, I don't think he is. See, so I, I don't I don't know if they ever run. Well, but he has the Pro Nitrous car. Yeah. Right. So they have the big 903 cubic inch uh, killers. Okay. But in the video, it seemed to me like he was just telling the, the turbo guys, whatever you want to do, come on, let's get it in. That's I think that's, like well, in Anthony's that's class, that's a little foolish, isn't it? <laughs> I've I think, I, I mean, think I, it is. I think if you were in Anthony's class, that would that would mean instant defeat if you could put say, look, put whatever turbos on you want. He even said whatever you want to weigh. He did say <laughs> that. Yeah. Well, I think he knows that you know the turbo guys would probably lose yeah. out on performance if they got really light. I'd say. Um, why is that? Well, when you're going that fast, weight is a very very uh, helpful factor. When guys try to get real real light. Like the grudge racers for cash that I know and deal with, the lighter we got, the harder it was to actually get down a quarter. So then we put the weight in it, make them heavier, and we can actually get the sixty footer that we're looking for. Hmm. Now that and, I don't know, I have no. Well, I'm idea. just saying, you know, everybody thinks to get light go faster. It, it is a theory that works, but at a certain point and a certain speed and how fast you go, it could hurt you. So, well, what's going on over there on the screen? Um, looking at, at phone calls and who's in place here and, uh, we're, uh, okay. (laughs) (laughs) 
I'm I, all right. Well, uh, that was time for crickets. I think. Yeah, it was kind of time for crickets. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, I could uh, start being a comedian. <laughs> no, you don't have to. The the comedian is currently taking care of the phone system. <laughs> oh, so, oh, all right, oh. Tom, you want to make the introduction? Our our guest is actually on the line. Um, sure. Um, bring him on. There he is. Joe, you there? I am. What's going on tonight, guys? Hey, we are here and uh, glad to have you, everybody. This is uh, Joe Kravikas from uh, Precision Turbo. Uh, really, really good for him to come on. Um, how's your night going, man? So far, so good, Tom. Just wrapping up the work day and getting ready to, to start the next part of my evening. Yeah, you. Glad, you, glad I can join you guys. You put some long, long days in. I know that. I know how hard it is to get, get you sometimes, so I appreciate you uh, taking the time out. Um, hopefully we'll get some calls, but we all have some, have some questions for you. If you want to get right into it. Yeah, let's dive right into it. All right. Well, uh, let's go with something easy. Tell us about you. That's really easy. I can tell you all you want to know about me. <laughs> I figured you could. <laughs> <laughs> As the guy stated, I'm Joe Kravikas. I'm a uh, current sales manager at Precision Turbo and Engine. I've uh, been with the company a little over 10 years. I actually started out as one of our sales and technical reps. And, uh, after two years on the job, I guess you could say I proved my worth and uh, was offered this position. I've been in this position for eight years now. And, you know, Tom, I probably told you a million times, and I tell everybody else, I got the best job in the world. I love what I do. I thought I had the best job, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, actually, it's funny. Uh, I was telling these guys a couple shows ago, uh, I'm in Abu Dhabi, and I'm like the only American there except for the guys that I brought. And, you know, doing the show, you know, the thing with Howard and everything. Yeah. And at one point, I'm standing there watching something, and I turn around, and Joe's standing there. <laughs> I'm like, damn. Surprise. Yeah, he's he's everywhere, too. Yeah. Well, you, you kind of have to be. Uh, hey, Joe, this is Mike. Um, I, tell tell us a little bit about Precision Turbo. Like, like what what do you guys actually, I mean, we, we certainly know what you do, but are there specialties? Is it broad ranging? You know, ba Basically, what makes tur uh, you guys unique? Yeah. That's not a problem. I'm going to start out with just a little background on the company history. So a lot of people probably don't know, but uh, the company, it's a sole proprietorship. Uh, the owner and president of the company, Harry Rusk, he actually founded the company back in 87. People say, well, how do you just, you know, get into this industry? Well, Harry started out this deal actually to help to fund his personal race car project. So he was a big road racer back in the day, and he said, you know what, I don't want to take money away from my current paycheck to, you know, to to go out and have fun. So I need to find another or an alternate source of income. So he started doing this as a side project, and uh, gradually he started to notice that there was going to be a niche in the marketplace for aftermarket turbochargers. So after years of, you know, figuring out wheel combinations and designing turbine housings and compressor covers and finding the right, right combinations to make the products that were in the marketplace suitable for our marketplace, which is street and race performance. He decided to, to take it to the next level, and we've started doing different things here. So gives you a little bit of a background on the history, but to answer your question about what markets we're involved in uh, or what our specialties are, you know, guys, we pretty much do everything and anything. So... We do everything from NHRA Pro Modified Cars to FIA World Rally Cross Cars to PPL Truck and Tractor Pulling. We even uh, are working with some airplane engine manufacturer to design products for airplanes. So you name it, we pretty much do it. Most people know us for our street and race stuff, but we, we're all over the place. We do everything and anything. Wow. So, I mean, e even what, what's done in the aeronautical stuff, if you don't mind me asking? That I can't really get too deep into at this point. But there is, uh, there's a lot of things going on with the fuels that they've changed there. So there's a lot of applications now that are requiring turbochargers. So it's it's a very interesting part in history right now that we're, we're fortunate to be a part of. And we're working with the right people and developing the right products. And we uh, should have some product out there very shortly. Okay, okay. I have a question for you. Sure. I know you uh, mentioned previously to Tom about PTE going through the ISO 9001 certification process. Where are you guys at with this process? I'm glad you asked that. Uh, actually, right now, we just achieved our ISO 9001 certification through TUV Rhineland. So right now, we are certified to design, manufacture, and service turbochargers and accessories. Uh, with this achievement, you know, there's a number of good things that we can do, but at the end of the day, it's about building a quality product and then using our continuous improvement to make our products and services better. 
Um, obviously, there's great value in the ISO. A lot of companies will downplay it, maybe people that aren't ISO certified, but for us, it was the right decision. You know, we've always wanted to, to be on time, have our product free from manufacturer's defects, and uh, be as described. So when a customer gets it, we want them to be happy. We want to exceed their expectations, and ISO 9001 is going to help us do that. It's going to keep us on track. Once we get through this process, where we've, we're moving forward, we are going to be looking at doing our AS 9001C certification. That's a, so that's a, a higher level of certification, and now it's going to open up more doors for us as well. Hmm. Was that, Joe, was that driven a little bit by the aeronautical industry? Because I know when we worked for Ford, uh, we had to get into that. Um, we knew moving in that direction where we wanted to be as a company that we were going to have to be certified both ISO and AS. Yeah. And uh, so that was the beginning pieces. Even though the people we're working with, it may not have been the initial requirement. It is a requirement, and we are dedicated to, as I stated earlier, we want to exceed our customers' expectations. And to do that, you have to manufacture a quality product. Hmm. Awesome. Well, you you mentioned the the aircraft product, which I understand you can't talk about, um, and and we get it. Um, but are, are there any projects or or new products coming that you can talk about? There's no doubt. I mean, historically at, at trade show season, which we're as Tom knows, we're getting into that pretty quick here. With yeah, we are. PRI, and it seems like it's always the revolving deal. And there's always more coming behind it too. But that's typically when we're going to go out there and we're going to showcase the new products that we're going to have available for sale right around the first quarter of the year. So at SEMA and PRI, you're definitely going to see more new products coming about from us. I can't get into specifics, but what I can talk about um, is the fact that we are going to be introducing some new Gen 2 aerodynamics. So for people that may not know our product line or are familiar with our lingo, um, a number of years ago we started designing and manufacturing our own line of compressor wheels and turbine wheels. Now when we brought these compressor wheels to market, they were made from a billet aluminum material. And a lot of people said, hey, you know, that's a, that's just a billet wheel, you know. Well, what they didn't realize is that when we designed that wheel, is we did it from a clean sheet of paper. We didn't take a cast wheel that may have been out there on the market and remanufacture it out of a billet or an alloy material. We actually went in there and we designed the wheel to do what we wanted to do. We wanted it to spool faster. We wanted it to have better transient response, make a higher pressure ratio, more horsepower. So by doing that, we completely changed the game out there especially on a millimeter per millimeter comparison. So we did that. We ran that train for five or six years, and then we started coming out with our Gen 2 aerodynamics. So that's what a lot of people are going to see from us over the next few years is bringing out more of this Gen 2 aerodynamics and showing people what we're really capable of doing here. Wow, so it just gets better. Well, he just took just my tech question. Better. He just well, answered my question before I, I asked him. I got to tell you something, Joe. What's funny is uh, the, the other guy, Tad, who hasn't said really much of anything yet today, um, <laughs> he um, he was talking about, you know, the billet wheels and, you know, what improvements could be made from billet wheels. And, you know, we don't know. I mean, certainly people look at billet components. They look at billet connecting rods and automatically billet is better. Um, I know what, what Tad had wanted to ask. I guess I'm kind of asking it is – is the advancement just in the ability to design faster? Is it is it time to market? Is it time to make changes so you're not dealing with a with a forging or a casting? I mean, what what is the big benefit to a billet wheel at this point? I think you hit a lot of those right on the head. Obviously, uh, time to market is a huge deal for anybody. You know, the design time. So if you go out and you design a wheel and maybe it didn't do exactly as performed, you can go back and redo it. For us, the key though, you know, is all the things that I hit on, but you're really bringing a superior product to market. So historically, there has been billet wheels and turbochargers. Now, most people don't see them because they were used in more of a an OEM or a high cycle production. So, for instance, um, a machine that's going to see you know million hours of operation. Well, with a cast compressor wheel, it may become fatigued over time, so they needed to make a compressor wheel out of a stronger material, a billet aluminum. But what most people don't realize is that when they did that they didn't change any of the aerodynamic properties of the wheel. They just made it out of a better material or a stronger material for cycle fatigue reasons. So when we came out with our compressor wheel designs, a lot of people said, oh, well, that's just a copy of this or a copy of that. But what they didn't realize is that it was out of a stronger material. So we could change aerodynamic properties of the wheel, get very aggressive with the designs to get them to do what we as street and race enthusiasts want to do. So a lot of the things that you brought up, I'm reiterating just in a different way. You know, we were able to design a wheel faster. We were bringing it to market faster. 
even though we our machining processors are more expensive than what our competition uses, there's a reason that we do it. But by using a 2816 forged aluminum wheel with the grain structure in the right direction, it allows us to get aggressive with our wheel designs and ultimately make more power, which is what we all want. Now, see, that, that kind of leads into something that, that, that actually bothers me. And we were talking about it a little bit in the very beginning. Um, I've known Anthony DeSoma my whole life. And, you know. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's, uh, he's a piece of work. As a matter of fact, when uh, I think the first time I met him, he had a, I think you'll have to go back to one of the early shows and listen, but it was his Ventura that he was like, yeah. you know, it was a streetcar. He was a kid. Yep. And he came in to our shop and one thing led to another. He's working for us. He worked there for years. And, you know, now to see him move into all the directions he's gone is, you know, I feel pretty good about it. But it hearing like the things that go on in his particular class and, you know, almost like the competition eliminator stuff, you're trying to be careful about how fast you're really going because you don't want them to take something away from you. So here they are. They knocked this turbo size back. How much, how much leeway do you guys have to, to try to find? I mean, are you, are you looking for ground? to get back to where you were with the smaller size turbos versus the bigger size turbos? Are there things left on the table? There's always going to be things left on the table, but it's very difficult to find those things. Um, I equate it to pro stock and HRA, you know, or like you said, comp eliminator, you know, anytime that you can find a little, little bit of horsepower here or there, it's, it's a huge deal. But the way that the rules are written these days, the rules makers are doing an excellent job. And we actually are, are big advocates, and we like to be involved with it because we want to see parity between the classes. You know, if we feel as though we may have a, a loophole in the rules, we don't go out there and try to exploit it. We try to point that out to the rules makers and say, hey, you know what, we could build something for this class, but I don't think it's going to be right for you. You know, and we want people to come out. We want to be able to share information with people and let them know what we know. We're not the kind of company that's going to withhold that for our personal benefit. And I know that sound, may sound a little crazy from a business standpoint, but we still want to do the right things at the end of the day. Right. And, and I can, I can agree with that. You need the competition. Um, you don't, you don't want people. And that happened with all forms of drag racing forever. You had a group of fast guys, everybody else stayed home. I mean, yep. Very counterproductive. So, so I, I can get that mindset. I can, um, I'm just unfortunately the guy that would want to blow the index out of the box every week. Yeah. I just, <laughs> just to do it. Just because you it. can. I know. I, I agree. I, I, I give anybody a lot of credit who can, temper their pass to for the for the good of the class it, it makes it pretty tough yeah it does so um the show season starting joe you guys uh have do you have a specific new product that you want to talk about that you're going to be showing off or is it really just the gen 2 aerodynamic stuff at this point you know the, the main thing that i can talk about is our gen 2 aerodynamics you know that's a huge deal i mean we're talking about products you know we just released one earlier this year you guys may or may not be aware of it but I think back when I started here 10 years ago, really not that long ago, but a 61 millimeter turbocharger at that point, the best that you could build would support right around 625, 630 flywheel horsepower. Today, our products are very conservatively rated, and we've got turbochargers that are making in excess of 800 flywheel horsepower. We've got customers that report back that are making 800 to the tires on Evos with a 62 millimeter. So one millimeter difference, but these guys are picking up anywhere from 150 to 250 horsepower. That's it's such a huge statement. And it's due to, you know, the compressor wheel technology that we use, the, the turbine wheel technology that we've designed, and all those things working in harmony, you know, with good engines and, you know, just good parts in the car. It's, it's a complete package. But to make that kind of power, it's, it's incredible. It really is. So we're going to be focused on rolling out more Gen 2 aerodynamics this year as well as some different turbine housing offerings, as well as some specialized products. Um, this, this is actually really exciting. So what we've done is, and I can't believe I'm talking about this. We're probably going to get in trouble about it, but that's okay. So we've designed a new bearing housing that we're going to be debuting at SEMA. Basically, what we can do with this bearing housing is we could take our components. So we could take our bearing system, our dual ceramic ball bearing center section. We can use our competition engineered dynamics compressor wheel and turbine wheel designs put them into this system, and then we can put them into the factory and the housings on pretty much any aftermarket application, whether it's an Audi, whether it's a, a Volkswagen, no matter what it may be, anything that came from the factory turbocharged that can appreciate or benefit 
from our bearing system designs and our compressor wheel and turbine wheel technology, we're going to be able to adapt that. So we're going to be able to take in a factory turbocharger, upgrade it with the best components that we can design and build, and send it back to a guy and put it back into his factory wow. car. Wow. Wow. That's a big deal. That's it a is big a big deal. deal. Mm, mm, mm. So you can instantly throw, you know, who knows how much power at somebody just like that. You know, and up to this point, you know, maybe we've been doing a, a compressor wheel upgrade or modifying this or modifying that, but now to have a complete cartridge that'll bolt right back into place and hook up to the factory, you know, water and oil lines, it's a huge deal. You know, it's gonna be it's gonna be a real game changer. Sounds pretty innovative. Hell yeah, it does. Yeah, very much so. Now I have a question for you, Joe. Sure. You're a uh, you're a big dog on the scheme of things in business. So I want to ask you a question that's going to take us back because I ask everybody that comes on every time we get a big dog. I want to know street racing back in the day when you were 15, 16, 17. Did you do it? I'll tell you what. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I was there, but I can't say that I uh, I engaged in it. How about right, that? For right. Right. I'll, I'll take it. I'll take it. You should just, you should hear some of the answers we get. I'll take it, bro. But I knew it was in you. Now, give me give me a dream car of yours. You want a dream car of mine? Yes. Well, if I had a choice of a couple, I would start out with a, a Kona Sig. They are by far my favorite exotic um, car. Wow. Well, right. um, they probably fun. run precision turbos on their application, so maybe I'm a little bit biased, but... <laughs> I, know they, I know they run manly connecting rods. <laughs> I actually had the opportunity to go visit their factory back in January, and I'll tell you, those guys have a first-class operation. Oh, okay. And, uh, it was wow. just so cool to be able to see 30 cars on their assembly line, and all of them were running our turbochargers. So that was a really big deal for me. Wow. If I had to pick another car, okay. I'll you, man, I'm into the small tire radial racing. I, I would build an X275 car, and it, I'd put it on alcohol, and I'd be right at the top of the heap. Well, just like the Bruder brothers out there in Jersey, man, those guys and the DeSoma Motors, those guys are on their game, man. Yeah, yeah. they are. True, true indeed. Interesting. Very interesting. Thanks for your honesty. I like that. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> so so let me ask you a question. When growing up, were you were you a car guy to begin with? I mean, did something start this for you, or is this just the path that life took? I'll tell you what. I've always been kind of a car guy. Now, my family as a whole, they were never really into cars. My dad wasn't a mechanic or anything like that. He was always the guy that took his car in for oil changes, so... When I was 16 years old, I got my first car. I was excited. Um, had my friend's dad show me how to change the oil. We changed the front brakes on the car, and we uh, we went to do the drum brakes. was a little hesitant, a little intimidated. I never did drum brakes on the car, and uh, he showed me how to do it. So everything was good. Then I went in for uh, get a tire rotation You know, a couple months later, and the guy said, all, all my brakes needed to be replaced. I said, you got to be kidding me. I said, I replaced the fronts and replaced the backs. Everything was good. And he said, well... It's going to be this much money to do it. I said, well, don't do it. So I went down there to pick up my car, and lo and behold, they did it. Yeah. it stuck me with the bill. So ever since mm. that day, I said, you know what? This is the path I'm going to take. So I uh, said from that point on, I'm going to learn how to do everything I can on my own. And uh, one thing led to another, and here I am talking to you fine gentlemen. Yeah, and and not, to, <laughs> not to say it badly, but it seems like that maybe a, a large portion of America has lost the the desire to learn to do it on her own. I mean, we, we always yeah, joke about the guy, you know, it's pulled over on the side of the road waiting for a tow truck to change his tire. Yep. You know, I mean, that's uh, hard hard for a racer to grab that mindset. It, yeah. It's pretty difficult. So was there anything that brought you into the turbocharged end of things? I mean, was there anything that steered you that direction or is it just employment direction that you took? I'll tell you, it was sheer chance. So I was working with... Uh, a number of buddies back in the early 2000s, we were running NMRA Hot Street at that point. It was an all-motor class, um, typically a 400-inch small block. And I started running around with some of the local car guys. So I got hooked up with another guy that said, hey, man, I know you're into cars, and uh, you know I'm a turbo assembler, precision turbo and engine. I said, are you kidding me? I said, I thought those guys were somewhere else. He said, no, they're right in your backyard. So one thing led to another. He got me an interview for a sales job. That was back in June of 2004. This is how good I remember that story, June of 2004. So came in, had my interview with the current sales manager at that time, and I hit a home run. I did great. He said, hey, I'm going to call you tomorrow. We'll, we'll get you lined up. We'll get you a spot here. So tomorrow came and went, and then the next day came and went, and a year came and went. Next thing I know, I get a phone call. I said, hey, you know what? 
I remember you, and you know, I know I told you I'd call you back. Well, it took me a little longer than I promised, but here's your call back. He said, "Why don't you come in for another interview?" And came in, and here I am. So it's, I'm a firm believer, and everything happens for a reason. And for some reason, I wasn't meant to work here at that year, and uh, but I'm here now, and everything's great. Cool. Wow, good for you. Hey, I got one more thing. I see that you guys are uh, you're running a promotion for National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, what's up with that? We are, and I'm really glad you asked that because I'm, I'm very proud of some of the things like that that we get to do here. So um, earlier in the year, we had a promotion that we did for St. Jude's. So we brought in uh, some of the street outlaw guys to an event that we were running, and uh, we auctioned off Big Chief's turbochargers for charity. All the money that was uh, donated from that went to St. Jude's. So we said, you know what, let's try this again. So what we did was we came up with a, a very cool uh, shirt design and slogan. So we said, you know what? What speaks better on turbochargers than twins? So we said, you know, let's do a promotion. We called it Save the Twins. So for every T-shirt and hoodie sold in the month of October, we're going to donate $10 to Breast Cancer Awareness. Wow. So we've got uh, up on our website, it's shopprecisionturbo.net. We're actually offering these apparel items for sale. And it's, I'll tell you, we went to Donald Long's race in uh, Georgia about a week ago, and it was a huge hit out there. I mean, the, the response was overwhelming. Actually, was fortunate enough to meet a couple women that that were currently going through breast cancer treatment, and uh, you know, it really brings a tear to your eye, man. It's it's just one of those deals, and I'm so fortunate that we could be a part of it and give back. Yeah, that's good stuff, and actually, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because I'm going to uh, I'll make some purchases down in Florida. I know you guys are going to be down there representing. Uh, you, uh, you'll be at well, you're not going to be at the Florida 2K, but you'll have your people there, right? Absolutely, yes, sir. So I'll buy some stuff down there. And, and do my part to save the twins. I mean, God knows I love them. Yeah, <laughs> especially identical ones. Yeah. They, they could be a little, uh, we're not going to get into that. No, no, no. Um, but no, I mean, Tom, definitely, you know, pick us all up, something. Yeah, I, I will. mean, it's it's a good cause. It's a worthy cause, and I hope everybody that listens to this hears that. Um, go buy some apparel. You know, it's a, it's a very good cause and cool stuff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I mean, and, and PT, has, they have the best apparel anyway. Yeah. And I shouldn't be saying that because, you know, when, when, when we're selling apparel and they're selling apparel at the same show, they kind of hammer us and <laughs> kind of stinks, but <laughs> you know, but I wear their stuff cause it just looks cool. Very so, nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, well, Joe, listen, uh, we know you're up against uh, a time slot and, uh, you know, I can't thank you enough for coming on, you know, it was informative, uh, we appreciate the time. You got anything else you want to throw out there? Actually, plug your, you know, plug the company. Uh, anything else you want to say in the last couple of minutes? I just want to thank you guys for giving me the opportunity to be on here and talk a little bit about our products and our services. I mean, we are truly a unique company at what we do. I mean, we design and manufacture all of our turbochargers from scratch, and uh, you know, we custom build them to your application. And uh, we are a one-stop shop, so. Just keep that in mind, you know, if you're ever trying to look to consolidate your purchasing, we're here to help you, man. We're going to we're gonna be there from the beginning of the sale all the way till the end and beyond. So, once again, guys, I really appreciate everything you do for us and uh, allowing me to be on the show this evening. And I uh, just want to say thank you. No, it was really good to have a Thank you. I mean, it was really good to have you. And, I mean, you know what the problem is? I've got... 5,000 questions. So, I mean, I'm definitely going to be, I'm definitely going to be calling you at some point. <laughs> There's no doubt about that. No, thank you. And thank you for calling. We really appreciate it. No problem, guys. Thanks again, and have a good evening. You too, right, Joe. You too. Right. Bye-bye. Take care. Bye-bye. I was a little intimidated by a guy. Well, he's a smart dude. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I And I, I, would, I, I felt like I had to be the good guy. Like I, <laughs> And you were. I could have said so many things about the Save the Twins things that I just, <laughs> I know. That I, oh, it was no, you were, no, he's he's uh, actually a really good guy. Uh, he's, yeah. He knows his deal. Yeah, but he answered my question before I asked it, so. <laughs> I know, I know. So he must be really smart, huh? There you go. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I I mean, I know we we should have given out the number while he was on the phone, but I mean, more than anything, we knew we had a limited amount of time. So, you know, sorry, guys, but I mean, I'm pretty sure he'd be happy to come back on again. Well, our, think, our listeners should be, you know, they should be happy because our, 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 our guests are really important people in, in drag racing. No, and, and they are. And, you know, and this was kind of a tough one because I there's there's important things about a company like Precision Turbo and Engine that, or Engine and Turbo, I guess, <laughs> got it backwards. Um, you you want to hear the technical side. You want to hear about all the new things. You want to hear about the cool stuff. But the, the company is a pretty serious company. Right. So, you know, having a conversation about, you know, the certifications, that 
to people that understand what that is, that means a lot. I mean, there's that, that's a pretty good accomplishment. Yeah. There really is. Yep. And I, I would have to say they're probably one of, if not the only ones, aren't they? Um, they're the only ones that I know of. Yeah. 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 I, I was kind of blown away by that. I'll tell you that I know about those certifications and they are very hard to get. Yeah. I mean, they get into every part of your business. Yep. It's no, you know, no joke. So for them to go through that, uh, it's very impressive. And, and, you know, like I said, a lot of technical questions we could ask, but, you know, yeah, with, with the true. limited time the guy had, you know. I had a question on my mind, too, but I just, well, I couldn't put it together while he was talking. I had, and, you know, <laughs> see, this is this is the hostility. This is the, the kind of the dick that comes out in my, because I just, I wanted, like, the, the, stifling <laughs> Anthony, like, like shutting the turbocharger size down, bothers the ever-loving shit out of me. Yeah. I brought it up enough times yep. that... I, I don't see the blower guys with a with a pulley limit or a displacement limit, do I? Nope. Nitrous guys can't say, well, you can't have a jet bigger than this. I mean, look, if you brought the wrong tool to, to work on a job, then, then go get the right tool. I, I mean, Well, here's a question for us. Let, let me think about this. If you look at the power adder situation, nitrous, supercharger, blower, right? Yeah. Is the turbo that more or that much more sophisticated than the other two? Sophisticated? Yeah, sophisticated better. and better, meaning better. horsepower per cubic inch. If you have a turbo with no limitations, no limitations per each power adder, is the turbo going to dominate? Yeah, I think so. I think so, too, and I think that that's like what that guy we were talking about, the the YouTube guy. Mm -hmm. And look, he's got a good person. It was funny. I yeah, I know. Stevie guy. Jackson. Yeah, that, that was good, and it was it was funny to watch. But, like, you know, making a statement like that, that, you know, the turbocharged guys, you know, learn how to get your front car, your car to front half. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm sure they're trying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm really sure they're trying. Well, they've come a long way. Well, I mean. The reason turbos are flying right now with ET well, is because they've come a long and way what's on the 60 gonna, footer. What, exactly. They're what's going to happen to these <laughs> to these guys, the, the juice heads and the blower guys that are, you know, all of a sudden when a turbo guy finds out what it takes to really make one of these things 60, you know, at some point somebody's going to hit on something that right. says, ah, ha, ha, mm. I got this. Yeah. See, I'm not sure about that. No, no. Only because I think, and this is just my opinion, you have to manage the power down low. Mm -hmm. And while you could make way more power uh, with a turbo, mm -hmm. it's just harder to manage it down low. Right. It just is. You can't, the, turning it on gradually is easier to do so far with nitrous. Right. Plus yeah. the turbo situation is a top side uh dominator. So you figure Well, yeah, but the reason it's a top side dominator is because they're trying to ramp boost in to make the thing move. Right, but the turbo's back half so well that the nitrous I can't see a nitrous guy ever being that strong on the back half. No, and that there would there would be exactly <laughs> the argument for somebody who was saying that the, the turbo guys need to fix their cars. Maybe the nitrous right, guys right, need right. to fix their cars so they continue to back half out the other side and not have the pistons coming out of headers. The nitrous guys are just happy that this is not, for the most part, quarter mile racing anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because the turbo guys got so fast. You know, and and the nitrous guys just burn their shit up. And I mean, I mean, again, and I'm not, I'm not picking on the I'm guy gonna Steve. To, I'm gonna have to call my no. friend Brandon Switzer and and see what he says about this because I'm telling you right now, he has no fear in his heart about turbo cars, mm. none. And he's a nitrous guru. Well, neither so. neither did that guy. He said, "Look, well, he's yeah, like, come be, any weight." Well, that's all good that he doesn't have any fear. But you know, just based on NHRA years ago when um, my buddy Brad Personette came onto the scene he basically just handed everybody their ass <laughs> everybody with nitrous everybody with superchargers mm. i remember when i guess pro mod they were going in the 250 range or 240 range 240 range and he came out and went 255 i mean he was 10 miles an hour faster than everybody else. Oh, i love that guy that's yeah, awesome yeah and wow. and for a cut for a year if he didn't break he was unbeaten he won a lot of stuff uh, i would i would just so like to just be around that guy or there when it happened and the guy just be like what what's so hard about this yeah i know <laughs> i know and he's such a great guy mm -hmm. like, yeah. literally is a cool guy and they you know they just ruled him to death so i and and <clears throat> but they do it you know they, they don't do it because of the turbo guys they do it because they want to keep everybody happy and no, they want to keep it competitive at, they yeah. want to keep it competitive 
for the well. They the don't sake want to keep sport. Yeah, that's to keep they, the people. They don't want to keep it competitive competing. for the sport. They want to keep it competitive so all the people keep coming and giving them money. Yeah, right. they want that's, so that's why they that's do. It. Keep the fans in the stand. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, look, in in fairness, and I think that it's pretty well evident by the rules that that they put on Anthony. If they let those guys have whatever turbos they wanted, the blower guys would still be, and the nitrous guys would still be trying to figure out how to catch them. You know, the the turbo guys would have to break or have a problem in order for, for somebody to lose. I mean, mm-hmm. that's what it was coming down to. So, I mean, but this happened in everything. It happened in bracket racing. It, it happens in everything. I mean, that's why bracket racing came to be. That's why the different class delineations of bracket racing, delay box, no delay box, because people were saying, well, that's not fair. So we'll put you guys off by yourself. I, I would imagine that they're probably at some point, you think they'll end up being like a pro turbo category and a pro blower category, or you think uh, it spreads it too thin? I think it might spread yeah. it too thin. I mean, they're having a rough time now. Yeah. yeah. Um, What's our phone number, by the way? Because nobody's calling in. I'm annoyed. <laughs> 908-751-0211. Yeah, but we, we didn't give it out. We more yeah, I think because we knew we had limited time. Yeah. But yeah. The, we'll, we'll get him back and we'll. Well, at least they can call in now and make fun of Tad. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can, can I bring up something? Yeah, so, hell we yeah. Just said this weekend, English Town got shut down and rained out for the Fall Nationals. It's been put off to next week. Nice. So. What does that mean? Well, we were going to all go there, and I was like, wait a minute. Ah, uh, never mind. It was canceled, so we can all regroup and go to English Town and see the racing, you know? See the WRX versus Evo. Is that what it is, this coming weekend? Yeah. The 10th and 11th. Oof. Uh, you going to be gone? No. I just don't know if I want to go. I'll go to that. <laughs> I'll go. Well, Mike's been wanting to go. I'll yeah. go. I'll go. Oh, Lord knows I'm closing. The up. weather's going to be nice. I can do that. We'll see all the. Well, we got a caller. Yeah. Oh. I'm watching a, watching a call screener who's obviously a fantastic typer. <laughs> <laughs> can we talk about who our call screener is? I had that I job don't, once. I don't think so. She's hot, right? Very hot. <laughs> yeah, I heard that. Very you, hot. You do it. <laughs> very hot. Very sexy voice. <laughs> I heard. <sighs> Hang on. Let's, uh, let's get him in. I know who this guy is. Hey Joe, what's up? What's going on, guys? What's happening? I not you're, much. You're the guy from chat, correct? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I see in her all the time. Sorry we didn't give the number out while the precision guy was on, but he it, like I said, I, I told people it was at the I think it was what day was it, Tom? You told me. Was it uh, Thursday or Friday? Thursday or Friday is like, look, uh precision turbo might not happen. Uh guy's got a tight schedule, might might not happen, and then I was like, Oh, oh no. And, you know, at least it worked out, but we knew he was on a tight clock. So what do you got? You got uh, a- not, no problem. Like I said, I was just going to comment on the, the Steve, Steve Jackson's video and stuff like that. And like I said, it, it, it just, I, I think what it's going to come down to, and like I said, I've been straight racing since I was 16. Like I said, we built, we built chassis and everything here in, in Southeast Missouri and stuff like that. And, you know, graduating and stuff like that for many years. And until they come out with something electrical like the the and and update the 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 technology on the on the uh turbos to the point that you know because nitrous was was still a a hard thing to deal with back in the day also until they until they got the progressive controllers and everything else and you know you most of the time you'd either blow the tires off or you know it hook like crazy and it and it'd go out the you know it'd go out but you know i don't you know, I'm working, building a turbo motor on my big block truck right now and, you know, learning about wastegates and all this stuff and, and all this. And it's just, it, it, it's a learning curve that nobody's got yet, I think is what it is. I, I think, like Tom said, that it's going to come down to power management, how you could get the power right. to apply nicely. Um, I, I know what you're saying, Tom. Well, you're, there's just a lot more time and experience in nitrous right now. I mean, they've been playing with nitrous hell since Marvin Miller in 1980-something. Right. So right. it's just, it's really time. Not that turbos haven't been here, but they really haven't been doing the same thing with turbos as long and as serious. Is I guess my point. And and, and you see how much it progressed. Matter of fact, in, I'd say in the last fifteen years, with the progressive controllers and and you know being able to flutter a, a nitrous solenoid without it either sticking or or you know not opening or whatever. Right. And uh, you know, so it just you know. It's. I think it's just a learning curve that's going to take years, just like it did with with nitrous, and just like it did with everything else. Uh, but I, while I was on, I wanted to give you all an update on Law Barnett. I got to see the video and everything. He's still in the he's still in the burn ward from uh, from down there from Lights Out Six. Oh. And 
but they're saying he's he's recovering the doctors are saying his his lungs are doing a lot better and uh like i said he just you know it, you hate to see anything happen to a fellow racer and especially a nice guy that everybody liked like lyle and um you know just it, just one of those things that you know i appreciate you guys mentioning it because like i said he he's just just an all-around great guy and you know would help anybody and uh you know, for him to be laid up in a burn ward and, and still not being able to speak or anything. And uh, one of his family members said he was still confused. You know, he still doesn't really know where he's at and everything else. So well, we're going to pray for him. We're going to keep praying for him. Yeah, that's a, that's a bad situation. And, you know, it's it's a very real part of, you know, what we're involved with. Uh, and, you know, it, right. and, and it's terrible. And, and a lot of times bad things do happen to good people. So, you know, all the best to him and his family. And we're definitely going to keep him in our prayers for sure. No problem. I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you letting me on and take up your time. Like you said, I'm a little nervous talking to you guys. So, <laughs> <laughs> Don't yeah, listen. If, if you were here, you wouldn't be nervous. Yeah, we're see, just a couple of idiots. <laughs> yeah, so, sitting here. Yeah, no, nothing to be nervous about, buddy. But thanks for calling. We appreciate it. Hey, no problem. Thanks, right. man. See ya. Are you guys making people nervous? Uh, I don't know see how. Tom, are, are you flexing? Are you flexing? I don't, I don't know what it is, man. Chat. Oh, it's Tom coughing and ripping out of the room because you know. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> yeah, Sorry dude. About what that. the. You just like I don't know I I don't know what happened. You knew I was sick. <laughs> Come on, man. I thought you ate a chicken. Um, <laughs> I, I might. I know. It, I I lost it for a minute. At least I got out of the room. I came back in and boom, right back out the room again. Now let let's go back to the turbo thing and the the Steve Jackson guy. Whatever. Mm -hmm. I understand what you're saying. Application of power. Mm -hmm. Um, does well, some well, of this? Do you think, do you, well, do you think what he said was offensive? Did you take like if you were a turbo guy? Do you think what he was putting in the video was offensive? I kind of took it as a challenge, right. which I'm sure right. is how he made it. You that's, know? that's how he is. He's yeah. the stick your, stick your chest out, talk shit. This guy. Yeah, him, but him he might have. I'm telling you. But he might have. They walk the walk, though. These guys, yeah. I, I understand that. Come but, on, I mean, that kind of that kind of talk, you might be walking up to the big bully, you know, while you're still wearing your skirt. If, shut down. If you take everything Until off. Until the bully whoops his ass, he looks good. It might happen. <laughs> Well, it should happen because he looks good. He's, you know, I have a thing against these guys, but when he does stuff like that, I, I respect it. I like it. I no look and listen. I laughed. It was funny. And there's yeah, we a lot, like it too. A <laughs> lot of funny shit on his page. Like the one guy thinks, "Oh, you own a turbo car? Uh, you should. We should both see other men." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, yeah. I could laugh at that shit. That's kind of funny. But the what I you talked about that it's progression. You know, to, to apply the power in a progressive form. Yep. And yes, nitrous solenoids are now working like fuel injectors, so they're they're controlling. Yep, they're yeah, better. Get it? Makes perfect sense. Wonder why they didn't do it. You know, when fuel injectors first came out, why don't you put nitrous through one of them? What do you need to do to do that? Mm -hmm. um, it, turbochargers, because they work on compressed air, is that the problem? That it's very hard to modulate quickly. What I, transpires? I don't know. Uh, you know, uh, I'm as novice at this as, as you are. I'm just taking what I see out there and trying to boil it down to an opinion. Um, I just think there's not enough time yet in turbos to get them to run the front half like the nitrous cars can. I mean, I don't see why why they can't from a power from a power standpoint. They obviously could run uh, with anything, but they can't put the power down and apply it quickly enough to run like a nitrous car. I don't know why. Well, and I mean, and, and again, this it is, has to be managed. This is boost con controller related discussion mm -hmm. that if, and to, I think, I think I can put it in a simpler form from what I see. I know of, the, of the problem when you, when you're making horsepower at a higher RPM and it starts higher, everything that you need to bail out of the hole and to keep that 60 foot like a nitrous car is down low. The RPMs aren't there for the turbo system. You don't need you, it. Yeah, you, you know, you can't bail out of there at six grand. No. And think you're going to hook like everybody Tom, else. Tom should be able to set us all straight. Get all-wheel drive. There you go. <laughs> oh, yeah. here no, we but, go. But what I'm saying is like the, the, the turbocharger, <laughs> since it's a compressor and since it's wheel and uh, RPM and speed mm -hmm. driven, mm -hmm. damping something down, I would think once they're up on boost, you now have that chunk to play with. Mm -hmm. I think that it's probably from just me trying to imagine the instantaneous ability to have almost a cylinder, a pulse per pulse shot of how much nitrous you get at, at a given time versus trying to bleed off a little bit of boost or bleed off a little bit of exhaust to try to control because you're, you're relying on that system to, 
depressurize and pressurize. I, I think I hear what you're saying. I, I don't know the answer. I think they're going to find a better way. I to think this, maybe this caller will know. All right, let me grab him. Hey, buddy, you're on the air. Uh, hey, guys. Uh, this is uh, B Doc from uh, Mixler. Uh, hey, man. Hey. Well, where are we going wrong here? Hey. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's um, it seems like they're with turbos. It's unlimited. You know, um, seems like with blower guys, uh, nitrous guys, there's somewhat of a ceiling. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's usually by the time when the pistons fall out of the bottom. Yeah, pretty much. Well, yeah, like you, like you were, like you were saying before. You know, with the guys running the eighth mile, it's like they're trying to equalize. You know, the turbo guys. I mean, I always ran quarter mile. Like that's that's what it is. I mean, I've been a stick guy too, so I yeah I. I like shifting through all the gears going through the, you know, going through the quarter mile. I can't do eighth mile. I just can't do it. Yeah. And I mean, well, the, the quarter mile thing getting cut back some, I think some of that is, look, I, I remember, and I think I told this story when I was with, I know, it was Nitrous Pete or Jimmy LaRocca. I was down at the track, one of these things, when there were regular, you know, stock suspension Mustangs with a regular tire. And I'm watching these things from behind all over the track. Yep. And I'm like, my God, so now we've got these X275 cars and a lot of small tire cars that are capable now all of a sudden with some, I don't want to say simple, but the potential for one of these small tire cars to come unglued because of the power they can make at the top end of the racetrack and get mm -hmm. catastrophic, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a little little nutty. And so, I mean, I kind of understand that, but I agree with everything you're saying. I'm a stick shift guy. But, but, but you, you got you to gotta be, be crazy to get in the car anyway. Yeah. A little bit crazy. Yeah. And I mean, I, I had asked Anthony a couple of times, I said, are you all right in the head? I said, dude, you know, when they were running quarter mile stuff. And I said, you know, that that's a, that's a hell of a, not a ride. If you watch the GoPro stuff inside the cockpit as they're going through the quarter, it happens so fast. They really don't do much in the, in your mind. But as a driver and the good drivers, they're doing a lot to keep the car. Yeah. Well, right. Your mind, your mind slows it down. Right. Yeah. Right. But that's, it's, it's amazing how they just go through the pass and it's over and they're pulling the chute and you didn't see much go on. Well, it's always amazing. Like you listen to a guy like John Force give an interview after a pass oh, yeah. and he's detailing it like in 60 foot increments. And I left it here and I did it. And I'm like, how the hell did yeah. all this shit happen this fast? <laughs> yeah, in 3.8 this... <laughs> seconds. And, and yeah, it was like a novel. Yeah. I know. <laughs> it's amazing. But it does. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, you make fun of the cup guys. Um, I don't know how they do what they do at 190 driving you know it, it, you know i was five feet from the track yesterday and i know it's boring to you and it was boring to me i would ne you know i've been to too many and i, I just did it for my nephews but it, it's still impressive to be jostling around in that, in packs like that at that speed that close to 190 you yeah. felt it yeah oh, pretty okay. cool okay not me man so yeah i'm a stick shift guy i agree with you i'd uh i'd rather drive a stick i also got a question for crunch Okay. Uh, Crunch. I mean, you know, I, I you know, a few uh, you know, shows back, that guy from I don't know where he was from was trying to come at you, try to call you out. I thought that was hilarious how you handled that. Was Are that you, Fly Tie? Fly Tie to Vega? No, yeah. no. Who that was, was after it? that? Wasn't it? No, that was the uh, the guy with Malibu, I think. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Those guys are from. Um, was the guy's name James too? James Cornick. That guy is from. Uh, well, I call him a clown, where I'm at. <laughs> yeah. but he's from North Carolina or South Carolina. I know you're talking about. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, well, I, I've been street racing, uh, drag racing uh, for a while, and I don't know about, I have the, my question to you is, mm -hmm. when you race people like that or race anybody that, you know, keeps trying to beat you and you keep whooping them right. every time. right. Do you try to be them as bad as you can, or do you try to, like, play with them and say, oh, you know, you might have been close? Well, you're talking about during the race? Like, if the race, I've only been in a couple, I've only been in a couple races where I actually could feather the gas pedal to manipulate the wind on the top side. But most times, I'm on a, a wide open throttle pass every race because you just never know what's going to happen in the next lane. So you can't play with it when you bet that money. Okay. Yeah, you know. I, I mean, when I used to, when I was racing heavy, um, I had the same guy come at me every week. So, oh, I did something new. I did something new. The same thing would happen. I beat him. I beat him even worse. 
every time because uh-huh. while he was changing stuff, I'm changing stuff. Well, I'm so like, sometimes, you, sometimes you got to be somebody's daddy and and pull the belt out. <laughs> so if he if he keeps coming, keep beating him. Yep, keep taking you his know? money. That's right. Point where it was a waste of time. I had to show, I had to shut him down. I said, you know, because at some point, at some point, it's not going to be interesting to you anymore. Because that person isn't bringing the competition that you need to progress. So I don't know. I understand what you're saying. Somebody's got their wallet open. I'm always interested. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's me. Yeah. All right, man. We uh, we appreciate you calling, and thanks a lot. And, and again, I'm sorry if anybody was listening to the turbo deal and, and wanted to get in with precision, but it was just uh, it was a timing thing. So, but uh, we we do appreciate listening. That's for sure. We'll just blame the screen. Yeah, Mark for turbo anyway. So. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, man. I'll see you. All right. See. You. <laughs> He's a good guy. No, he's not a good guy. Yeah. Speaking of Fly Tie, what's up with Fly Tie? Where's Fly Tie from? Yeah. Uh, he's from New York, but he moved down to somewhere in the South. He's a young cat. Yeah, no. He, he, you know, he just got his first, first graduates for cash. So he won. He beat, a, he beat a guy from our area that's. Do you know his last name? I have no idea. You know his last name by any chance? Ty. Is his first name Fly? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> It's I can obvious. find out. You're killing me. Uh, wait, wait, I can talking. find out. Because we, we got somebody that is racing a guy from New York named Ty. And what kind of car is that? I don't know. I I'm that you bring that your guy has. My guy's got a Monte Carlo. And where are they racing at? Done classified. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, this guy's name is Fly At a Ty. legal sanctioned racetrack. He yes. Has, he, has a, he has a Vega, so. He's, He's got a Vega? It's a primary Vega. Okay. I'll find out. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. It, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, I know. I know. No, it was just bizarre. Uh, one, you know, my boy Anthony was t- telling me, um, I shouldn't say my boy. It makes me sound like I'm trying to be cool. Yeah. You're a little, <laughs> you're a little, yeah, at, you're our cool, age, nah. at our you're, age, you we're cool, a little bro. past that. You're, 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 you're a cool nah. motherfucker. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> my friend, Anthony. Right, right, right. Because he is my friend too. Um, he was telling me about a race guy coming up against a guy named Ty. Some, some wise ass, loud mouth, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, Ty. Yeah, and he's like, "Yeah, he's from New York." I'm like, "No, get out of here!" But I, I, I didn't know what kind of car. I'm gonna try to put it together and see, yeah, yeah. see if it's him. If it's Fly Tie, we'll know about it on SmallBlockPosse.com. Yeah, well, if it's so. Fly Tie, we're all going, no matter where it is. Yeah, so absolutely. Go. I, honestly, I want to meet the guy. Yeah, I want to shake too. his hand. He yeah. was good. He was cool. He was yeah. real good. Yeah, he was good, but he's a nobody. Is so this he's be on an his way up. Race? He's on the come up. Yeah, yeah but but to, put his work in. But to to come up, you got to have a little bit of that personality. You got to have oh, a little yeah. bit. Oh, he's, yeah, he's he's definitely and he's a good guy. You could tell, you know, his, his family raised him well. He's a good guy. Yeah, I, I think so. Very respectful good. dude. So good. So hey, there's the music. That's my yeah. favorite music. Yeah, they, I uh, not because we're leaving because I like this music. <laughs> yeah, this one was pretty good. I I don't want to tell everybody what we went through to find this music. I want to listen to some music that even Tad wouldn't listen to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we'll be back next week. Thanks again for listening. Uh, Like us on Facebook. Like us on iTunes. And uh, we'll see you next time. Yep.